Um, again, the usual time in the morning, so I don't expect uh, many people in, but it'll be something people can catch up on later. So essentially, I've just got uh, the new Rapax springs. So I've got the uh, three jewel, three jewel plus one here, um, which I've had for a couple of weeks now, and I've just received this morning uh, some of the two plus jewel ones. So with this one, I had some. So the bolt pull on this, to me personally, in my particular build, is about the same as a, a Silverback 160. Um, and maximum I could get out of this was about 3.6 joules. And that's with the Wasp in the lightest configuration, no air brake, uh, three spacers. Um, whereas something like the Garda M150, I could get 4.4 joules out of. Um, albeit I am using the prototype VSR chamber with my Flamingo back in. So I get a bit of gains from that versus the, the standard AD, AEG design. Um, but very, very consistent. Um, didn't lose any power over the last two weeks of cocking. I've, I've put a, a good few thousand rounds through it just from testing. I've gone through a couple of bags of BLS just in the last two weeks from various testings uh, for the chamber, the springs and some other bits. Um, no power loss. Consistency in terms of shot to shot is really good. Um, the power you can get out of it is pretty good. Um, it's a lot easier than using a Silverback M160 or 170 to get the same sort of power. Um, but for me personally, this versus the Garda M150, the bolt pull felt the same to me. Um, but at this point, I've built and tested so many of these, and God knows how many times I've caught this particular rifle, which is my personal SRS. Um, I don't notice a huge amount of difference in terms of the pull between the 150 Garda 150 and this. But that could just be because my rifle is just better than that much and I'm getting that extra jewels out of the hop unit. Um, but either way, I liked this, but for me in the UK, obviously the three jewel springs a bit too hot. Um, so obviously I've been sent, service that I paid for, uh, a couple of these two jewel ones. So I'm just going to open one up. Uh, for testing purposes, I'm using the X Cool Tech, which I always use. Um, seems to be the most consistent out of the Chronos. Um, I'm going to be using some BLS 4s uh, and I'll be using one of my Wasp Pistons. Um, this is in the lightweight configuration with no air brake. If I can get the spring out, that is. Which at the moment is a challenge in itself. Oh, have we got it? Nah, yes, right, okay. I do like the way these are simply packaged, in fairness. Ah! There we go, right. So this is the two jewel spring. Um, doesn't feel very powerful. And one thing to note is, so this is a Silvac M140, which I'll show you some testing, but it gives me two joules on the light sleeve, 2.18 joules on the alley sleeve, and 2.25, 2.3 joules in the steel sleeve. Um, and you can see the, the Repack spring is a lot longer. So, this is supposed to be the two joule plus spring. So what we'll do first is I'll put the chrono on. Uh, I've got that set to, if you'll see that, to fours. So, lightweight S Wasp, the M140. just because I have no idea where my mags have gone. So, 1.9 joules and a 4, 1.93 joules and a 4, and that's with just a, a Silverback M140. Two 
two joules there, so 0 0.05 difference there. So that's our benchmark. That is with the Flamingo Buckingham, uh, the Stalker Sniper Mechanics SRS Hop uh, conversion uh, with the 428 Craze Jet, M140 and the Wasp in the lightest configuration. So we'll take this out and we'll put in the uh, 2 plus dual spring and see what that gives us. Out. See what the bolt pull's like on this. I'd say that's about the same as the M40, M140, sorry. And that gives 2.448 joules. I don't know if you can see that, the bloody reflections there. So I'm just going to test that again to make sure that wasn't a fluke shot. And bolt pull is very easy on this. Um, obviously I've modded my cylinder etc anyway. So 2.3 joules. Two point three joules. So that first one's obviously where I've just not put it in the chrono properly. Two point three joules. So on the exact same setup, just going from an M one forty silverback spring to the Rapax two plus joule. Um, I've got, what's that, 15% extra, 15% extra joules out of a spring that feels exactly the same to cock. Um, it's more consistent, although that's probably not a fair test because I've only obviously done a handful of shots rather than the, the 10. But, like right, that's, there's nothing in that. So yeah, that's, Yeah, it's very, very smooth. Um, obviously, I haven't greased any of this up. Um, the amount of times this has been apart recently. So that was just on the aluminium setup. Uh, not the aluminium, sorry, the lightweight setup. So, if you remember at the beginning, I said that this gives about 2 joules with this sleeve. About 2.18 with this sleeve and 2.3 with this one. So that was with the M140 spring. So I'm gonna do the exact same tests, uh, but obviously using the Rapax spring. Obviously no air brake on this one. So, that off, put the alley sleeve on, snug it down. So I'm going to guess, seeing as I was getting 2.35 out of the light sleeve, I'm going to guess 2.47 out of the alley sleeve. <laughs> 2 um, obviously that was on the, the first shot, so let's just make sure that that's right. Two point four, two point four three, sorry. Two 
2.47. So that's settling in now. So again, this is out of a spring that's as easy to pull as an M140. Um, and this is on fours, obviously that dual creep is going to change on different ammo. Two point four six joules. So obviously we were getting two point three joules out of the Rapac spring with the poly sleeve. We're getting two point four six joules out of the exact same setup using the middle sleeve, which is the alley sleeve on the wasp. And then with the steel sleeve, unsure what the findings are going to be because of the way weighting works on a piston spring length actually plays quite a large part in it. So for me personally, a spring that's longer than the cylinder it goes in doesn't benefit as much from a weighted piston as a spring that is almost the same length as the cylinder that's going in. And that's all to do with piston acceleration, deceleration and the power curve of a spring. But we'll see. So I'm just putting on the steel sleeve. And again, you're watching me doing this live, so there's no swapping of springs or anything. Right, still on. All right. So again, same spring, same setup, just put in the, the steel sleeve versus the, uh, the alley one. And see what we get this time. Two point five one on the first shot, uh, and as always, the first shot, the cup expands. So I reckon this one will be a marginally higher. Nope. Two point five one again. So as you can see, the Rapac spring is about 15% more powerful than an M140, at least in this setup anyway. 2.489, so 0 0.03 joule variance, which is pretty bloody good. Um, and that's a mix of the Wasp paired with that spring. So, with the M140, we were getting uh, the... Um, Two joules, 2.18 and 2.3, depending on whether we use the light, medium, or light, medium, or the heavy sleeve. With the Rapac spring, we were getting 2.3, 2.47, 2.51, depending on whether we were light, medium, heavy sleeve. Now, I'm going to install three of the spacers for the Wasp. Well, one, I'm going to see if three spacers will work with this spring because it is quite long. Um, and just see what the maximum power you can get out of the two plus dual spring with a weighted wasp. The test will be to see if it does cock just the compression length. So does it cock? It does. So take some more fours and see how much we can get out of this. Two point seven joules, and that's with the heavyweight piston, the Rapax two joule spring, and three spacers. So easy to cock. And again, the, the it's a little bit tougher now because you've got the three spacers. But without the spacers, that's very two point seven again. It's a very easy bolt pull for the joules of getting out of it. Um. So yeah. So far, two point seven again. So so far, it's very consistent. Bolt pull is very easy. Um, obviously, obviously, everyone's results are going to vary depending on what your setup and stuff is. Um, obviously, as I said earlier, mine's using the Wasp for testing. Obviously, I've gone for the various weights to test, but normally my Wasp is set to steel sleeve heavyweight at 2.3 joules um, but for this I'm using the VSR hop chamber conversion 
428 Crazy Jet, 50 degree Flamingo Buckin, um, the two dual Rapac Spring with three spacers, and on fours, two point seven joules. So that's pretty impressive. Just to test that again, I'm going to swap nothing but the spring. So I'm going to go from the Rapax two joule back down to the Silverback one forty with the three spacers, um, and obviously see what that's going to give us in the same setup. So we were getting 2.7 joules out the Rapax 2 joule spring and the exact same setup. So with the Silverback 140, <coughs> 2.5 joules or 2.49 joules, sorry. So you're still getting that sort of 10, 11% increase um, just from swapping the spring from the Rapax down to this. Um, but what's very interesting and very good, Milan, I wasn't sure if you'd be awake. Like it's pretty early for a live. Um, but I'll save this video and I'll, I'll stick it on YouTube or I'll put it on the Sniper Mechanics page. Or you're welcome to use it, Milan. So, yeah, 2.5. So the key things to note about this then is, so with the 140, the Silverback 140, and I haven't used an air brake just because that adds nine more configurations, well, even more, because there's three to the power of three, so it's like 27 more configurations. Um, so for base testing, I've just used the unbrake one. And we started with the 140 with the poly weight, the alley weight, the steel weight, and we got two joules, 2.18, 2.3, and that was with the silverback. Now with the Rapac spring, we were getting 2.35, uh, 2.3, 2.47, and then 2.51, just by changing the weight. So immediately, for the same sort of bolt pull, the Rapax gives you a lot more power for the same spring, the same effort. But, you're also getting a bigger amount of um, configurations. The, because the gap, the incremental increase between the weights is higher with the Rapax spring than it is the Silverback, you've got a lot more fine tuning in terms of which weights you want to use and how many of these spaces you want to use. Because obviously we started at 2.3 joules and by changing the weights and adding three spaces, we've managed to get it to peak at 2.7 joules. So that's 0.4 joules worth of play you've got and obviously if you add an air brake, that's going to dip it down. You'll get a huge volume reduction in terms of sound um, and a minor power reduction in terms of joules. But because you've got that flexibility to go from 2.3 joules up to the 2.7, you can find your sweet spot, whether that is the lower end for sites here in the UK, 2.3, or whether you're sort of here in the UK playing more serious events like Mule Sims where they're a bit more flexible, you've got that 2.5 joule limit. And then for people in other countries, out of the 2 plus joule, on my setup at least, I can get a maximum of 2.7 joules out of it. Which is pretty damn good for something that feels like an M140. Obviously with the uh, 3 plus joule, um, the results are different. So we'll try this one next. So I'm going to reset everything back to what it was. So take the three spacers off. Silverback 140. Wasp piston... So we'll start all again. Um, so back to the alley sleeve. Morning everyone. Sorry I haven't been looking at the questions or anything. Obviously I've just been concentrating on getting this done. So wasp with no break, poly sleeve. Uh, with the Rapax 3 Plus dual spring. Chrono's on. So, baseline, it's about the same pull as a, and a Silverback 160, I'd say. So, unweighted, just with a poly sleeve, with no spacers.
gives me 3.2 joules and a 4, which is significantly higher than a, a Silverback M160. Three point two joules again. So again, the springs are very consistent. Like right, they are very, very good. So we got two point three point two joules with the light setup. And now here's where, when I spoke about weights on my blog and over the last sort of two or three years, I've been talking about weighting stuff. There's a limit where the weight of the piston becomes a negative value based on the length and power of a spring. So what I mean by that, and I don't know if I've got my guard spring knocking about, but I'll show you what I mean. So that was 3.2 joules with the light sleeve and the Repax 3 plus joule spring. And now I'm putting on the alley weight. So we got 3.2 joules, and with the alley weight, we get 3.28 joules. So very, very minor increase, like negligible. And then when we go to the steel sleeve, oh, if everyone keep asking about the wasps, I've basically, I've got another few projects on the go. Um, obviously the Flamingo buckings are one of them and there's some other parts for the SRS I've worked on and they, because I know that there's no SR rifles, SRS rifles available now until sort of mid to late May, I'm probably going to get my other projects finished and then release the Wasp with the next batch of rifles. Just because most people that have an SRS now have got a Wasp already, um, so it's the new people that are looking for them. Um, and yeah, the other products um, I'm eager to get out before they get copied. Um, I already know a couple of them. People have already had attempts at trying to do it. So obviously I'm just trying to make sure that I can get my one out um, in a timely fashion and get all the testing done. So the factory's been priority on that. But they are coming, uh, both for the SRS and the VSR. So 3.2 we got out of the Rapax 3 Dual Spring with the alley weight. And with the steel weight, gets 3.3 joules, 3.38 joules. So you're still getting gains, but it's minimal. It's not a huge amount. Um, and when you add an air brake into that, air brakes suffer a lot at high joules. There's sort of a, a break point where the, you get a minimal reduction in power, but a huge reduction in sound. And then when it gets to a certain point, sort of the three joule, three point three joule mark, um, that reduction in power gets a lot higher, just because the force of the spring, especially if it's a long spring, just forces the air brake through that nozzle and just blocks it. So you just cannot get the the same power as you would with an unbraked. But you can extend that sort of breaking point by using a, a tapered brake. Um, or oh, actually, I've, I've shortened some of my brakes. So this is an SRS one. Um, just like cut it down by half and ta tapered it off. So next, I'm going to do the same setup with a steel weight, but adding three spacers. And see if we can get higher than the 3.3 joule mark with the full weight wasp. Which does make it a bit harder and actually on my setup with three spacers the wrap axe doesn't catch. So I'll take one out. Try that again. So it catches with two. So with the Wasp and the Rapax 3 dual spring, um, two spacers is your limit. 
just because of the compression length for that spring. So 3.5 joules with my setup is the absolute maximum I can get out of the Rapax 3 Plus dual spring. And that's with the steel sleeve uh, and two spacers. Now, if I put that to one side, I've got a garter spring here somewhere. Is this it? That could be it, or is it one of these? I think this is my garter spring. I'm really crap at labelling stuff. So we'll take all the spaces off, we'll leave the steel sleeve in there and see what this one gets us. Well, I'm not sure if that is my garter spring. It feels a bit too light. I don't know where I bloody put it. So this is with what I think is the Guider 150, uh, with the steel sleeve, no spacers, so steel sleeve, no spacers, 3.2 joules, so about the same as the wrap axe, but if we see if we can put some spacers on, I think because the compression length for the guard is a lot less, um, you can get away with three spacers. I should know this because I did a video on it the other day. And bolt pour on this, for me personally, feels marginally easier than the Rapex. Um, but again, it's I've done this so many times I generally don't know. So wasp steel sleeve, three spacers, no air brake. Three point seven joules, so a little bit higher than the Rapax. But if memory serves, when I was testing this the other day with the Garda spring, because of again because of that compression length, smash bang. So thank you to some people who forced me to make. Yeah, yeah, the two jaw one is going to be. I think people are going to struggle to use it in a 22 inch SRS. I think it's going to put them over the limit. Um, but in anything like a 16 inch or a G spec, it's going to be great. Um, but again, actually, obviously, I'm running a different. I'm running my own bucking and I'm running my own chamber, so my results will be different to someone else with a 16 inch setup using an SRS backing and chamber. Yeah, 3.45, so negligible change. So actually, the Rapax versus the, what I think is the Garda. Try and think what I used the other day that gave me 4.4 joules. Unless this isn't a Garda, this could be the PDI. Hmm, I can't remember. But that's pretty much what I wanted to do today, or this morning, was just to give you some quick updates on the springs that I'm testing and things. What are you? You're a modified spring. You're... Are you a modified spring? So you have to test which one this is. This, basically the guard ones are actually quite short, especially compared to the Rapax springs, which are massively long. Um, oh yeah, that's not going to be a Garda 150. I think this is the Modify M150 spring, um, which is what I was talking about in the SSG video yesterday, funny enough. Um, they actually fit and they're not too bad. I 
Yeah, see, modify springs really easy to use, as in cock and a 2.4 joules. Um, 2.4 joules with three spacers and the uh, the light sleeve. And I think they can get up to sort of 2.6, 2.7 with the um, steel sleeve, which I'll try now. So yeah, my thoughts on the Rapac springs so far is I'll certainly be using them. Um, for the, the bolt pull is pretty easy. Consistency is really great. Um, and because of the way that Milan's got them manufactured and designed them, the, the power curve, if that's the correct term, is is quite large in terms of how much you can affect it by changing the weights or changing the tension with the three rings, which is why we were able to get between 2.3 to 2.7 on the two joule spring and 3.2 to 3.5 or 3.7, whatever it was I got, on the three joule spring. So it's pretty, uh, pretty impressive really. You get so much variation, variety at the same setup. And obviously this is done using a wasp. You've obviously got um, there's other pistons out there. You've got the, obviously the standard seal back, the VMP, and there's some other guys making some pistons out there. Um, so there's definitely uh, a lot of configurations available. Obviously, I use the Wasp, I promote it. A lot of people I know use the Wasp, and I think quite a lot of you guys in here have got a Wasp or at least know someone with one. Um, so this is uh, Modify M150 with steel weight, no brake, three spacers. Two point five four joules. So I actually run the one fifty myself, um, and I usually put on uh, no spaces in the air brake, which brings me to sort of two point three joules, um, and obviously it's very quiet. You'll notice this isn't my usual setup. Um, I usually run this with my G spec with my TNT barrel, um, but that setup, the fast top TNT modified nub etc., is shooting so well. I didn't want to change it, so um, I've just dropped my old original because this was an original sixteen inch. I've just dropped this back in. I haven't even got the rally anymore. I gave it away to a customer. Um, so that's why I'm using the 16 inch with a 428. But my go to setup is the 300mm G spec set. Right, so I'm going to catch up on some of these questions now, I guess. If there is any. Uh, uh, Zeon says, What barrel bucking chamber have you installed? Barrel is a 428 Maple Leaf Crazy Jet. The chamber is the VSR chamber conversion by myself and Stalker Airsoft. Um, the nub is, I think it's a rubber prowler nub I've got in there, or maybe my nub, um, and the 50 degree flamingo bucket. Um, yeah, so that's what's in there barrel wise. <clears throat> Morning all. Da -da -da -da. Ah, so it's not just me that doesn't label those loose springs. No, nope, I've literally got a box here. I've got like 15 springs there. Um, I need to get some kind of like hanging system so that I can have all my different springs because I end up having to sort of go through process of elimination and put them all in a stock SRS to kind of work out what they are. But hopefully this gives you an idea of what to expect with the, the Rapac springs. And I've just picked these up, haven't I? I can't remember which one's which now. Uh, right, that's the two drill, three drill. Um, yes, yeah, so hopefully this gives you some insight into the springs. Um, thank you, Milan, for getting these sent over. Um, I've got to say I like them. I like the versatility you've got with them in terms of being able to change that power so much depending on how you set your rifle up. In my case, my adjustment comes from the Wasp. With other people, you've obviously got your own modded pistons or things like the VMP. Um, or different barrel setups and things. But for me, I like them. I think Skirm Shop are stocking them. I know the Netherlands branches, I think UK is going to stock them. Um, quality is great. Um, consistency is great. Bolt pull is pretty easy. Um, the two jaw at least is, is very, very easy. The three jaw to me is about the same as a Garda 150. Um, but that could just be because I've, I've had my Garda 150 a while and it's had a few rounds through it. So take that one with a pinch of salt. But it's a good spring. Um, it works, it fits, um, it really works well with the Wasp. Um, some huge benefits coming from it. I think if you are going to go for that four jewel mark, if you're in that area, um, the Garda 150 is probably the option. But for anything under that, like anything up to sort of 3.5, 3.7 jewels, 
maybe more if you're using a, a longer barrel, like a 22 inch. But for anything else, the, the three and the two jaw springs are, are great and they cover pretty much everything. Um, I mean, that's fine. Um, what I'll do is I'll try and download this off Facebook um, and I'll stick it on my Sniper Mechanics page and on uh, my YouTube, maybe. Uh, and then feel free to, to use it yourself or maybe Scrum Shop will put it in the put it on the product description or something and I might put it on my blog. But yeah, so end of note, good springs, good quality. I like them. I'd use them myself. I will be using them. Um, I have one for myself and then obviously I've got these ones for testing. Um, I'm going to try and put this back to G-Spec when I finish with the prototype chamber um, and see what different results I get out of that. But thank you guys for joining. I know it's early, but hopefully this will stay on the page or go back to my page. I'm not sure how it will work. I've never done a live in a group before. Um, but have a good day, everyone.